of numbers and start. Stars. The story of Hypatia by D. N. Love, illustrated by Pam Paparoni. On the northern tip of Egypt, where the Nile River meets the Mediterranean Sea, stands the ancient city of Alexandria, established by the Alexander the Great more than 2,000 years ago. The city soon became a center of learning and trade. Scholars from all over the world came to study at the university and to read the scrolls in the great library. Glass blowing, linen weaving, and paper making flourished. Spices and perfumes, barley and dates went by ship and caravan to faraway places. By the 4th century CE, Alexandria was home to several hundred thousand people who lived in graceful houses set along wide streets. It was a city of theaters and lecture halls, taverns and workshops. Artists made murals and mosaics to decorate the building where laws were made. In houses and on busy street corners, philosophers, astronomers and mathematicians gathered to debate the important ideas of the day. One day, the in the house of Theon, a baby girl was born. From the very beginning, she was a beautiful child, round and rosy. Her parents named her Hip Hypatia. Hypatia. Had she been born into an ordinary household, perhaps we might never have heard of her again. For girls who lived in Alexandria so long ago had few rights. Hardly any of them learned to read or write. Many become servants. Perhaps Hypatia's mother planned to teach her how to manage a fine house, how to weave and cook and sew. But her father had other ideas. A girl should be educated in the same way as a boy, Theon declared. I will teach her everything I know. Since he was a professor at the university, he knew many things. As soon as Hypatia learned to walk, he set about keeping his promise. Under her father's watchful eyes, Hypatia learned to swim in the calm, sun-bright sea. She learned the names of all the fishes and fishes and how to catch them with a spear. She learned to ride a horse, pressing her knees to its sleek sides, the astonishment of most other girls who could only watch from her, their windows. Up and down the street, Hypatia rode past the linen weaver's shop, past the glass blowers and the silk merchants and papyrus makers, past the shop where her mother bought perfumed oils for the family's lamp. One summer, Hypatia learned to row a boat, practicing until she could steer it through the sea as straight and silent as an arrow. Her father was pleased with all she had mastered, but there was much more to learn. Every day, Hypatia practiced reading and writing. She learned grammar and proper way of speaking. She read the works of great poets. She studied science, learning the names of the reeds and trees and sweet-smelling blossoms that grew near her house. She studied the ways of birds and the night creatures and learned to name the pictures the stars painted in the dark windy sky. One day, Hypatia rode her ho horse, horse to the university to visit her father. Leaning over his shoulder, she watched him to write sentences made not of words but numbers, but of numbers. She saw the patterns the numbers made. To her, they were more beautiful than the patterns on her mother's favorite urn. One look at his daughter's expectant face told Theon all he need to know. We shall begin with arithmetic, he said. Later, you will learn geometry and astronomy. And so they began. In time, Hypatia knew all about numbers and lines and 
triangles and squares. She learned to track the movements of Mercury and Venus, Mars and Jupiter and Saturn across the night sky to predict the time of the rising and setting of the sun. Hypatia also studied philosophy, which means she spent a lot of time thinking about thinking. In search of true wisdom, she learned the pronouncements of the oracles and the debated with her father questions of values and the science of reasoning. Soon Hypatia became, became a young woman noted for her wisdom and scholarship, dressed in a turban, the robe of a scholar. She lectured in public places around the city and at her home, where a constant stream of students from wealthy and important families absorbed her every word. She, some came from Alexandria and other towns in Egypt. Others arrived from Syria, Cyrene, and Constantinople. Most studied with the woman they called beloved teacher for many years, then went on to important jobs in the church or in the government. With her father, Hypatia wrote books to explain the work of other scholars. Quiet and dignified, she won the respect of the city's leaders, many to whom came to call on her as soon as they were installed in the office. After a time, Hypatia's fame spread to other parts of the world. She received letters from other scholars eager for her opinions on math or science or philosophy. Following Hypatia's advice, her devoted student Synesius developed an instrument called a astrolabe. The astrolabe helped sailors measure the angle between the sun and the horizon. It helped them determine latitude and find true north as they journeyed across the sea. Although there were other women philosophers living at this time, none become as famous or beloved as Hypatia. Through her extraordinary roles as scholar, philosopher, writer, and teacher, she became a symbol of learned women for the centuries to come.